What have you, Lab Rats? This is episode number 25, and today we're talking about social. Wow. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to the lab. My name is Megan. I'm Kevin. And let's get, get in, in the lab. lab. Hi, Lilip, how are you, T? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, we got some new muffs. Mm-hmm. Thanks, uh, by, TV. Uh, by Audio Technica, and I highly recommend these muffs. <laughs> muffs? <laughs> muffs, yeah. <laughs> I, call them, I call them muffs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I highly recommend these headphones. Why? Uh, if you're traveling or if you're just a DJ or something. <laughs> if you're um, a DJ. It really has really nice acoustic sound. It does have really nice sound. I can hear yeah. you a lot better in the, in, the, uh, in the feedback. And it's, yeah, it's bass friendly. It's not too heavy on the bass. Mm. It's, it's just right. Yeah. It's yeah. nice. And it's comfortable. It's comfortable, yeah. We that's <laughs> that was the biggest complaint about mm-hmm. the other one. I was like, these things freaking hurt. And yeah. then you just show up with some new earphones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um today, what's going on today? Uh today I'm just wrapping up a wedding and yeah, we're having well, I'm snowboarding tomorrow, so I'm nice. getting ready, gearing up. For Big Bear tomorrow. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, other things that are going on, um, kind of like settling back into the scheme of things of working again. And uh, we're, we're slowly, we're, we're pretty much out of our holiday funk. We've been like at the computer for long, long hours, like just slaving away, trucking away, getting back into the groove of things. So that kind of feels good and, and not bad, but like I'm tired again. Yeah. <laughs> And you got your first uh, potential client for Clean Media, right? Maybe. Oh, maybe. That's pretty awesome. We'll see. So Clean Media is expanding uh, slowly. That's that's nice. It's like um, it's kind of a like a nice feedback because of all these things I've been changing and being more consistent about certain actions. And it's uh, you know, the fact that I can merit um, somebody just calling me out of the blue to say, hey. I think I want to hire you. That's good feedback. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, really that's good, good feedback. feedback. So um, I'm confident about that. But otherwise, we are going to talk about social today. And I wanted to talk about social because I was having a conversation like with my cousin about, you know, what to post on social and what platforms to be on and, and how it can uh, help or harm your image. Yeah. And we speak about social a lot. We do. Even for the photography business, we a always lot. go back and forth and see where we should market more on yeah. what platform and and how to speak the language for every social media yes, platform. Yes, we're, we're definitely going to get into that. So we're going to talk about six things that we changed within our businesses uh, that I think um, are really showing some progress and giving back the reward that we want, which is more engagement, more, more sales, more customers that we do want and love. But before we get into that, we can't forget to do our couples one, two, three tag. Oh yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. let me go back here. So the, uh, the second question, mm-hmm. have you had an experience that you would say has impacted the direction of your life? Yeah. <laughs> so deep. So what? yeah, it's, yeah. I, I think it happened when I was in sixth grade transitioning into seventh grade. Um, I would say I was I was a little lost. Sixth I didn't. I, <laughs> so hard for a sixth grader. <laughs> well, it was pretty damn hard when there was many personal things happening in the back end uh-huh. of uh, my dad um, moving out. And oh, it was in sixth grade. Well, it was around that time. Oh, I yeah. thought it was high school. No, it wasn't you're talking high about school. the divorce, right? Yeah. Okay. So it, yeah, that was happening, and I left private school, which I hated so much, <laughs> and I was like so thankful that my mom signed me up to a, a local public school. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, during that time, I was trying to find my way, finding new friends. Um, at the same time, I was dealing dealing with uh, the grieving process of the divorce. Mm. So my my actually my um cousin natalie uh she came and like speak to me and then she really influenced me in a huge way 
Oh, uh, Natalie, huh? Yeah, that That's pushed cool. me a little bit further in uh, in school as well as being an all-around person. Mm. And from there, we would always visit her while she was going to college, just sleeping over at her apartment, spending more time with her. And from there, she really impacted my life in, in a way that I'm more steered towards uh, a passion that um, or a direction that I like to do. I mean, a direction in life. So that's yeah. cool, V. I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. That's nice that you shared that. Yeah. I think um, if I could add on to that, oh, well, there's there's so many things with parents, um, but experience that would impacted their direction of my life. <laughs> oh, that's so like there's so many of them actually. Uh, maybe but I'll that talk was, about yeah. That was the initial impact. Initial. Okay. And then everything sort of just followed after that. Uh, uh, for you becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, sort like of becoming like the person that I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the person that I never procrastinate. Mm. Um, I just get things done. I equal the balance of working hard and playing hard mm. uh, throughout high school and then as well as in college. And well, that's very yeah. cool. Yeah. She's coming to the wedding, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hear this, hear more stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So that gives me a little bit of a base to kind of jump off of. Um, although I think, I think mine's not as cool, but the moment when I stopped like, you know, fucking around in school and stuff, cause I didn't mm-hmm. care. We were just talking about that yesterday when we were taking a walk, but, um, uh, kind of like this fear <laughs> from my parents, uh, like I didn't want to disappoint them. And I think the fear of disappointing, I think that took me on a very, kind of weird direction in my life for a while until I I figured out I didn't have to uh, worry about that so much. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about disappointing others so much. Like that, that was such like a big thing. I think in my youth, that's what I remember from my youth. It wasn't very like, what do I want to do? It's what, what do I do this? So I don't disappoint. Yeah. And, um, for a while that was like super, like just all consuming. You don't want to disappoint your cousin or your parents or uh you know other people in your life like they come to expect something from you and then you you sooner like forget what you actually wanted until I met you actually Mm. and then I could be and then I I saw kind of like this weird dichotomy like I can actually do what I love because you you were doing that already Mm. and that was very like hard for me to like come to terms with for a long time because I thought like I don't know it, w- it was bad to be rich or it was bad to uh, to do all the stuff that you were doing. Like it felt I felt guilty for wanting to do what I wanted, like to even like voice that. And and but slowly, like your influence on me showed me like I can do what I love and I can actually say what I want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I remember those times. Yeah. When <laughs> I first I spoke like, to you and you sense. said that you want to be a tometrist. And, yeah. then, <laughs> and then I was a little confused while you went the health science route and yeah. then graduated and didn't want to do automatry and yeah. went to work for. What? Well, yeah. A lot of it is so. like, you know, figuring out like, you know, what what is possible. And I think when when people realize what is actually possible, which is anything, anything yeah. is very possible. But you don't if you don't believe it. Right. Because you've been brought up to believe a certain thing about yourself or your own limitations like you you can't see it right you can't see it it's very like when i see it in you at that time it was like that that's just so weird it doesn't make sense to me until i started to slowly read things outside of myself and and be just influenced by you all the times that we you know we're together all the years we were together and i said oh okay yeah, i can i can have what i want actually which yeah. is very liberating and which is really cool now is that we're influencing each other yes so you're yeah. influencing me now that you're more um taking an initiative and learning more marketing strategies Mm. and yeah yeah and we i think we keep each other on track it's like a really really great partnership so good job oh good good job (laughs) (laughs) okay so let's get back to the topic at hand we're going to talk about social and uh like we said we were talking about social because it's in our minds all the time it's how we market ourselves it's how we get reach it's how we get our clients uh other you know other than like referral by friends and stuff like that but I wanted to talk about the first thing that we started to change in how we uh, were marketing on social. So first, let's talk about what platforms we're on. Yeah. So we're on Facebook, 
Uh, Megan's on Twitter. You're on Twitter I'm, too. Yeah, I'm also on Twitter. <laughs> <For> <laughs> <sake>. <laughs> um, Instagram. Uh, you're on Snapchat. You're I'm on, on Snapchat. Well, you're on, just uh, for like my what's sister, that other basically. One? Uh, I'm on Vine? Tumblr. That starts with V. V. Vine. Vimeo? Vine. Okay. I'm on Vine, but Vine, like I don't yeah. do anything on and Vine. And YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. So the big players for us in what we do in the four businesses that we run uh, are Facebook, obviously Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube yeah, combined. I, yeah. Not not just for one business, mm-hmm. not just for the photography business. For photography, it's mostly Facebook and, and Instagram. And I have to add to that um, also other platforms like Yelp. Oh, Pinterest. Yeah, Pinterest, Yelp. Yeah, Yelp. Yelp's other a big one. Um, for photography's only, uh, Two Bright Lights Two because bright lights, they allow yeah. us to get featured more. It's not really a social platform, I'd say. It, it could be. It could be, but it's yeah. not really utilized that way. So um, the first thing that we started to do differently within those platforms was to balance between personal and business posting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the main thing that we usually did before was we posted a main picture, a sneak peek to Mm -hmm. whatever, like to whatever that blog post was to to link back to the site. Yeah, just to kind of rally up your viewers. Right. We used to do that and we still do that, but now we're, we're throwing in a little bit more content. Yeah. So we try to balance content, which is like business stuff with like personal content. Mm -hmm. So like we don't do a lot of selfies. You're not a really big fan of selfies because you're just not that type of person. And it's yes, it is getting old, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's it. You have to find the balance between you as people and what you're okay with and what you're comfortable posting online and the the business and how you want to represent your business online that way. Your, your clients, your customers, your friends get to see you a little bit, right? And we talk about that a lot, about transparency and stuff like that. So what do you think, uh, if you could concretely say, the balance between, you know, personal posting and business posting? What's, what's our, like, ratio? It's more business posting or more what? What do you think? I think it's pretty balanced. Yeah. Because we, when, when we're interviewing the clients during a meeting or when I interview the clients during the meeting and after the engagement session, uh, mm-hmm. which is like the pre-wedding photos, they share me their website and how they first met. So we have an idea what we can place in the blog to make it more personable to them, mm-hmm. as well as when people read the blog, they'll be touched and they'll also kind of put those words uh, to the photos. So they really kind of feel what the photo is about right. and why, and- yeah, and why it's taking place at these areas yeah so i would say between personal and business it's about 50 50 right because we're not just marketing our business but we're basically just like telling our clients stories that is exactly right that is exactly what it was on my mind so it's 50 percent personal 50 percent business content posting on social whatever whatever platform it may be but it's a hundred percent storytelling yeah it's got to be rooted in story and so whenever we post about ourselves we're, we're telling the story about ourselves and we're showing who we are behind the behind the lens and behind the business and then again like I really encourage people who are getting married to have wedding websites. It's really cool. It's great for me mm-hmm. because I don't have to like <laughs> try to make stuff up or try to remember <laughs> like little bitty things about the client. Like we have so many clients and it's not, you know, I'm not dissing our clients. Like I love our clients, but I can't balance everybody's story in my head as I'm writing about them now that I'm blogging and stuff. So the wedding website really, really helps just to keep those little tiny facts that I can't remember all of that stuff in line. That way, when I blog about you or write about you, um, I have something more concrete and more solid to say, you know, I could tell your story more accurately, which is really cool. Like I was just doing, um, the last blog that was up on Mm -hmm. the blog, uh, they had a really incredible, sweet story. And it was, yeah. it was cool. Cause I could, and that, I could really uh, roll with that. What adds to it was that the client was a writer. So oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really, yeah, really nice writing. So that was really cool. Um, so another thing, uh, what do we always do, but what do we never do? Um, what we always do is always kind of give, like you said earlier, is to give a sneak preview mm-hmm. of the upcoming session that we're about to blog. Also, it kind of gives like a shout out to our clients that, yeah, we, we love the engagement. We appreciate 
you coming out to the session yeah. and having us shoot it. Yeah. Um, so we always do that. Yeah. And afterwards, we always blog um, a wedding and then we kind of spread it out. We don't kind of clump everything together. Yeah. So we always kind of entertain our viewers, kind of space them out. Uh, that way it's not redundant. So we always blog a wedding and then we'll blog engagement and engagement and then vice versa and, and now content now. and then yeah so now content like and, a, and a little bit of us as well yeah. um what we never do is uh i mean we're slowly doing what we never did before <laughs> yeah. well we never post without a picture yeah okay so i i still see like big names like tim ferris <laughs> he'll post like a quote without a picture and still he'll get a lot of engagement but like it's just it's just take the time to, you know, put a picture to your post because it's going to it just shows more personality, it shows more effort in your posting as well. Um, I know it's kind of annoying because you have to find the right picture and yeah. all of that stuff and you're competing for for everybody on space on the feed and stuff like that. But it just goes to show that you're still giving 110 percent of heart into what you do and it just keeps you on track, even those little things. Um, even when I, when I gripe about it myself, when I end up doing it, um, it's just a reminder to myself that, you know, I'm, I'm giving everything every single time, you know, that way I get that return back that exactly. I want. So, um, another thing that we never do is, uh, push too much. We don't, we don't sell people too much, like buy my stuff or yeah, we, buy this. I don't or, think we ever do that. Yeah, we never do that. I don't force people to like my page. I don't say, oh, please like my page. Yeah, please. Like, <laughs> yeah, we don't do that. Um, if they like you, then they'll like you, mm -hmm. right? And and the meaning behind that, like we're not really, our goal is not for 10,000 likes. Um, obviously, like 10,000 likes, that's a big accomplishment. That's That shows that you have some standing in there, but that's not the goal to be on social. The goal to be on social is to be social and to mm -hmm. engage with the people that are following you and to actually give entertaining informative content so we really try to keep that in mind although it's it is always tempting to be like you know why don't we have a lot of likes and for mm -hmm. that to just be our goal to you know just shoot for the likes but now we're getting more in depth because we want to tell the story we want to engage with the people who are following us and not just following us for no reason and so it, it means something to us and it right. gives you sort of an idea that, yeah, they're there for you and they're your true fans. True fans. Yeah. So um, what else do we never do? We never do anything. I, mean, I think that's good. Yeah, I believe that's it. I mean, we're not putting our faces in every post that <laughs> everyone's <laughs> always seeing us every day. Oh, I used to do that. I used to just put my face everywhere because I thought like and then I would change the look of myself like all the time because I get bored, but there wouldn't be this consistent image, right? So that's another thing too. So the work that we post, it's always, um, and you're kind of always reminding me of that, like the work that you post online, sneak peek or whatever, whatever image goes up on the Facebook feed, take a lot of time to think about that. It's consistent with what you're doing, but not, and if you wanted to push the bounds of your creativity and post something different, it's not too crazy. It's not, if it's never too crazy. So it's in line with the brand is what I'm exactly. saying. Exactly. So, uh, that's something to really, uh, be cognizant of. Oh, lastly, which I was having another conversation with somebody else and which is like, if you are trying to establish yourself and you're not an established brand like you, perhaps me, right. And I'm trying to establish clean media. I would want to create some sort of intrigue. So if somebody didn't know crap about me, but they saw something, maybe it was YouTube, maybe it was a Facebook post, maybe it was a blog post or whatever. And they go, hmm, I want to learn a little bit more about that person. So they click on my name or whatever. You need to have content or something in the back end to support that, you know, interest. Instead sort of, of like an introduction. Yeah. Instead of like I go click on your name and then I go to a website that shit on my mobile or shit on the desktop or it's like got all these like old pictures or old reels or whatever. Everything is old. It's not up to date. I'm not seeing any social engagement. Like I don't see you engaged within the last like week or so or whatever. Or maybe it was like two years since you were last on Twitter. Like stuff like that. If there's nothing there to back up that interest, then whoop, I just fall off the grid. I yeah. had interest in you and now I just fall off the grid because there's nothing there to back that up. 
So um, I that's, think the last thing was we're always consistent. Consistent, yeah. 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 I mean, if you want to be known, if you want to engage and take advantage of the audience that you can get online, you got to be there. You got to yeah. be present for that, right? So uh, thirdly, we now natively post. So this is something that's I kind of been back and forth about because like it kind of cuts into your um, productivity because before I would I would try to post on Tumblr, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook all at one time using uh, Hootsuite or Buffer app. Yeah. You know those places like you just either you just go to like bufferapp.com. It's like a send all button. Send all, right? And so um, the reason why I got turned off by that is because I'm a big Gary Vee fan. So I watch all of his shit. And he's like, that's stupid. <laughs> you need to natively post. You need to speak the language of that platform. And I was like, that's totally correct because I wasn't getting any engagement off those. Yeah, you have to be real in every platform. Yeah, yeah. And just speaking, yeah, the right language for those platforms. Right. And know the purpose of what each platform does. Right. So unless you can like... And I know, I understand that like, you know, scaling your, you know, social media posts that way saves you a lot of time. But I think then you're kind of missing the point of being social, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's something that we kind of have to get back to our roots on is, is how to be humans, even now that we have all of this technology in front of us. So that's something that I'm definitely going to try to work on is like try to be more social. Um, I've got you know, people want to do those Google Hangouts with me and I'm still like so lazy to try to learn how to do it and host. And that's being social. That's really being there in the flesh. And yeah, it's taking time to learn how to use the technology and be there and be present for those types of digital Hangouts. And that's the kind of like dedication that I need to take into the rest of our business. And I think that the rest of uh, other people marketing on social should do, you know, take that, you know, commitment and dedication. Like these people, they're not just likes and numbers, they're people on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so you need to show, show up for them in that way. Exactly. So I would say, you know, mm -hmm. like for Facebook, you know, like we're seeing this crazy massive explosion of like, um, posting your videos onto Facebook because it'll add them automatically play. We started doing that as well. Instead of just like, here's a little snippet and then I'm going to push you to my website. That would yeah. be great. But now I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to throw that thing up on Facebook. If you watch it, that's great. Um, and if you really like us, you're going to come. You're going to come yeah. to the website, whatever. You're going to sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss an episode. Subscribe. So there's things like that, you know, like it's just it's it's a little bit more. We see it as more work. You know, if if you see it as it, if it's more work, but if you enjoy it, then it's not. That's why that's my job. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there are things about it that's like, you know, because I know you don't like taking the time to do that because you have other stuff to do. That's my job. And that's great that you if you can surround yourself with a team where you're like, you're not the best at this, but you love it. Go do it. Right. And that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best at SEO, but. Well, I'm, now I'm you're getting to, better. Yeah, I'm learning <laughs> to love it. And so I go do it, right? Or blogging or writing or whatever. So um, next thing, um, video. Uh, did we say what platform we use? Yeah, in the very beginning. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay. They're kind of out of order. So. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> video. video, yeah. Video is really important. You know this. Yeah, video is definitely important. It's important, uh, I would say, even for Facebook now. Yeah. Because. Uh, what time are we at? I don't know. Let's take a break before we get into video. That okay. way we can just like not get cut off. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll come back talk about video. Okay. Back from our break. We're talking about uh, video, right? Video. So how important is video and should you be using it? I would say yes. <laughs> it's very important. I think that's where I would say social media is heading towards. It's mm. more real life people just speaking versus yeah. just typing and w reading words it's it's easier yeah like you should ask yourself how many times you visit a website yeah and do you read those content or you go straight to just clicking on that youtube video yeah exactly so um kevin and i we're gonna we're planning it's not confirmed but we're planning on a, a honeymoon in iceland and i'm like totally it's confirmed <laughs> i think we're going <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're to I'm totally obsessed with iceland it's my fantasy place everything about it it's got furry ponies and nature and it's amazing so i'm i'm researching about iceland and what i could find out and just like 
there's a bunch of crap I could read, but video, 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 video. And they show you like uh, the Blue Lagoon, for example. They take you step by step through that. And I was like, this is amazing. I love this because all my questions are answered about the Blue Lagoon just with this one video. And that's exactly. great because now I'm just, I'm totally sold. We're going to do it. Yeah, it's you're more happen. intrigued. Uh, yeah. seeing the actual footage. And I'm assured too. I'm assured as somebody who's not, you know, like I have no familiarity with going yeah. to a spa or a blue lagoon like thing. Yeah, you, you actually trust the business more because yes. it, there's automatic proof yeah. that it looks like a blue lagoon. And they just take you like step by step, every little step. Oh, you're going to walk through these doors. I was like, that would be something that just goes over your head. But like yeah. seeing the outside of the place, seeing the architecture of the place, all that stuff. But, yeah, I think video is just not going to change socially, but it may change everything and how we do things legally. Yeah. Uh, how about there's a contract that was mm -hmm. just all video. You're like, yes, I signed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just send me it yeah. like there's proof of your face agreeing to the yeah, contract you nodded and, and that's it <laughs> versus a bunch of paper no one's gonna read that crap yeah 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 very true or like somebody like it's a video it pops up out of the contract and it reads you all of your rights and crap like that like yeah it, i mean we can get into our predictions later on but um i i really think that video can be utilized in any service industry any industry, basically, yeah. if you can use video to assure your clients and customers about who you are, what's going on, why they should pick you, it's just so much easier with video. But that's not to say that you shouldn't learn how to write copy, copy meaning, you know, uh, sales text and, and writing for your website and stuff like that. That's still very important because that's how the search engines find you and rank yeah. you and all that stuff. So that's still important. But uh, video, I think they're going to figure that out. They're going to figure it out where video kind of trumps text and kind of it already does. Cause when I, yeah, was later, I mean, you wouldn't have to write because Google will probably, well, they probably did already. I is think they develop did a like, dictation yeah. and they'll, because they, they can kind of predict what music you're using in your video. Well, yeah. Right? And some, yeah. some videos rank higher than blog posts when I search stuff like, like Iceland. I think like the, uh, the video that I was searching for, was like second to this text article. Hmm. So I was like, okay, so they must be doing something or, you know, there's like a script to that video. Yeah. That's kind of getting in the nitty gritty of, uh, SEO marketing. But, uh, yeah, I think video is very important. If you're not doing video, if you're not including it in how you reach your customers, and I think you're <laughs> you're mm -hmm. you're just not in this century. So, uh, what are some ways that people can you know start to slowly get Engage. into video? Because you were very against video before, not against, but just like it was something that you yeah. didn't want to do. Is like God, I have to be on video. God, I have to do my hair right. Like, I, I always kind of gripe about that because I have more to put on my face <laughs> than uh, you do. I mean, to, to get used to it or how like, to first start? You know, like, if I said to you a year ago, hey, let's do a video. You'd be like, nah, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, wh like, why? What were your reasons? I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it it wasn't needed. Oh, uh, like, okay. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't need to make a video. I, I didn't see the purpose in well, making a video okay so how did you feel when we shot those uh, faq videos right over here yeah i, I felt how did you change i i hated writing and um when every time i went to my website i felt it was too much content to mm -hmm. read i think it would just discourage people from going through the faq anyways yeah so yeah i think a video faq would have been an amazing idea so that's why we executed it Right. It's just easier to watch someone explaining everything versus reading it yourself. And right. when you're actually speaking in front of a camera, you're able to say more versus reading a, like a huge paragraph. Yeah, you can ad lib. You know? Yeah, you, you can, can add, add more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So do you find that people, was that effective? Do you think are people asking you less like, Dumb questions. <laughs> well, see, we're still in the phase of transitioning the old blog, I mean, the old website to the new website. Oh, so okay. it's not on full blown yet. So okay. we can't see. And you know, we haven't even effective. marketed yet. That, yeah. Like that we have a video FAQ page. Yeah. That's something that, that I should be doing. So, <laughs> but still, um, uh, we're 
our I mean, our goal is to expand the FAQ a little yeah. bit more as well as in our newsletter, uh, right. be more video based yeah. versus content based. The point is, is that, you know, on whatever level that you want your clients and customers to see you on, which is for us, it, it can be kind of personal because photog- wedding photography is personal. So we need to kind of make that connection, whatever that may be. Uh, video is going to be a big part of that. Writing is going to be a big part of that in our pictures, right? So all that stuff kind of working together. And so you have to take a look at your business and see, you know, how can we make video work for us? Maybe it's, maybe, yeah, it's a video about how the sales process is like for hiring you. And uh, that's something that I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and put down what's, what's it like to hire me uh, uh, for clean media productions to do your online personal branding? Like what does that process look like? So if I don't have that down for somebody in a very clear way and, you know, video is the best way to do that. Um, as long as I can execute a good video, uh, I'll be able to secure more customers that way and more customers will feel, you know, safer, Mm -hmm. safe and, and trustworthy of what, what I can do for them and what my services are. Yeah. So that's something I'm going to do. So uh, video is very important. <laughs> and lastly, do we have any predictions of where social is going and how do you think we're going to be marketing ourselves uh, specifically within the photography world moving forward? For, I mean, for the photography world, I yeah. believe being more personable, being more transparent mm-hmm. in your business is where everyone is heading towards but not a lot of people caught on in making their own videos so i think videos will be the next big thing okay probably more video workshops even though some big name photographers probably like six years ago made their own videos and their own dvd workshops Mm -hmm. uh, that that was pretty big and people felt like they can't step up to that level but now that most of our DSLR, a lot of our equipments have the potential to make just high quality films. Yep. People will be, you know, more motivated to make their own workshops. Yeah. And I've been yeah. wanting you to do that for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that you can, you can very easily, we can very easily make something like that, but it's yeah. a matter of, yeah, executing and, uh, and that, I think that's a whole new like set of questions and things that we can talk about as to how do you start to implement video into your, your, your marketing and stuff like that. Um, or even just creating yeah. content. But the predictions of social in, in a point where I feel like Facebook is slowly calming down. It, it wasn't as crazy as when it first started or like four years ago. Mm-hmm. Instagram is really taking off yeah Yeah. taking off on its own yeah even though it's owned by facebook yeah and it's just all mobile it's not even yeah you can't even go on the desktop and you can see the pictures on the desktop but you can't post anything right yeah so you have to kind of take that extra step when you're posting on uh on instagram if it's not taken from your phone which is something that like I, I was griping about that like just a couple of days ago because it's not it's not easy for me to just kind of like switch things, switch up platforms, move this and that, whatever. But again, you're reminded to take those extra steps to to go where your audience is. And for right now they're on Instagram. What other platforms do you see are, are kind of expanding? What about Pinterest? Uh, mar- Pinterest has been expanding. Yeah. Um, but it only caters towards certain brides that like to the pinterest brides yeah the pinterest brides that kind of like everything pretty and soft and (laughs) that's pretty and soft (laughs) but you know what we're we're not pinterest people but we did refer to pinterest for just ideas on like color palettes and uh furniture positioning of how to decorate your home and stuff so Um, it's a good social platform yeah for ideas yeah yeah but um, what was really annoying, because, you know, for wedding planning and, yeah, you know, like fixing our house and stuff like that, nobody puts the freaking, like, names of things. So when you guys are posting on Pinterest, like, we're doing this now and being really specific about what's in mm-hmm. that photo and not just, like, again, batching and blanketing out uh, each photo that we that we put out or market um, is to be really specific and, and say what's in that photo. Because yeah. if you 
if you do that, you're effectively helping somebody out to go, what, what is that plant or what is that shoe or whatever? And sometimes, yeah, you don't know, but if you can, if you can help it and if you can be really explicit about what you're marketing, um, that's going to really help the end user. And when you help mm -hmm. the end user, the end user goes, oh, I remember that this guy always puts like everything, like they lay it all out, like this one wedding website, it's called Rock My Wedding. And they give you everything from the shoes to the suit to the dress. Like that's really like helpful. And that just made me think like, okay, how can we be super specific so that people are like, they remember us in another way as well. Not yeah. just, oh, they got great photographs, but they tell you everything about it. And I think that's something that I want to utilize uh, in my writing and in my marketing and all that stuff is be really specific. And mm -hmm. so that people get their answers and they go, oh yeah, they, they know everything. They give you everything. Yeah. They actually help me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other predictions for social? Is Yelp still very powerful refer for you? Yeah. Yelp yeah. is probably, I would say. I spend so much on Yelp, man. Yeah. 70%. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The it's, other 30% is from word of mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so you're going snowboarding? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to go home this weekend finally and I'm going to see my parents and perhaps my grandpa and stuff like that. So that's going to be cool. Um, and yeah. Oh, I'm going to be speaking. I think I told you this already. We had, I don't know what about. Probably something about like. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't got, I'll be speaking at San Diego podcast, San Diego. You can find a link to that somewhere. And, uh, if you can come out and support me, I don't know if you're going to be there. No, you have a wedding. Mm, uh, I'm not Maybe. sure yet. Yeah. I'm going to bring a camera. I'm going to be shooting. I'm going to be taking video. I'm going to be vlogging. I'm going to be doing my thing. And uh, I think it's going to be a good time. So, um, shout out to all the people who are going to be attending. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So next week, we're going to talk something about uh, 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 probably the rules of business and marketing. I think I want to talk a little bit about that, unless we have any questions. So uh, keep sending in your questions. You're not sending any questions, so send them in so we can answer them on the show. We will answer the crap out of them. And uh, with that, I think we'll end it. So once again, my name is Megan. Yeah, I'm Kevin. And we're out. And we out.